In the last lecture of tachometry, we have seen the formula to calculate horizontal distance between two points when the line of sight is horizontal. That we can find out the distance d between any two points by using formula d is equal to f by i into s plus f plus t, where this f by i multiplying constant. multiplying constant and f plus t is the additive constant. Constant. Now there are this is the formula to calculate the horizontal distance between any two point by using tachometer when line of sight is horizontal. Now we are going to see what are the some characteristics characteristics of tachometer. Characteristics of tachometer. What should be the characteristics of characteristics of tachometer? Thus, the very first characteristics of a tachometer is the value of this multiplying constant. It should be 100. So of this multiplying constant of y, that should be 100. Next characteristic, the telescope should be powerful. The telescope of the tachometer should be powerful. This telescope of the tachometer should be powerful. Having magnification power of in the range of 20 to 30 diameters. The next characteristic is the aperture of the telescope should be of diameter 35 to 45 mm. This diameter of the aperture of this object glass objective should be of 35 in the range of 35 to 45 mm diameter so that we can get the bright image of the star. Then the next important characteristic is the telescope should be this telescope should be fitted with some analytic lens. That is, the telescope should be fitted with some analytic lens. That is, analytic lens is nothing but one convex convex lens provided in between eyepiece and object glass. This is eyepiece, this is object glass and one additional lens, convex lens provided in between this eyepiece and object glass is called as analytic lens. And what is the function of this analytic lens? To make this additive constant, this f plus d additive constant equal to 0. By Introducing analytic lens in between eyepiece and object glass, we can make this additive constant of this tachometer that is f plus d equal to 0. Then, so what it uh, how it helps? It makes the calculation simple. If this f plus d value is 0, then we can calculate distance d directly by using this f by what is the value of this f by multiplying constant? it should be 100. So, our formula will reduce to d is equal to f by i. What is the value of f by i? That is multiplying constant 100, that is 100 into s. So, we can simply find by, by finding out the stop intercept s, we can find out the any distance d. So, by introducing this analytic lens, we can make additive constant 0 and so to reduce the formula simply D is equal to 100 into S. Then another uh, this analytic lens, uh, well, there is one disadvantages of this analytic lens. It uh, brightness of the it reduces the brightness due to absorption of light. That is only disadvantage of the providing convex lens, and it is generally provided with the external focusing telescope. Okay, so these are the Four characters and the last characteristics is the eyepiece. That is, this eyepiece should be of greater magnifying power. The magnifying power of the eyepiece should be more so that it is possible to obtain the clear staff reading. So we can read the staff clearly. Okay. So what are the five characteristics? One that constant f by i should be hundred. Another that is, this is the multiplying constant, the value of this multiplying constant should be 100. The another one is the magnifying power of the telescope should be in the range of 20 to 30 times the diameter. 
the next that is the aperture of the objective is in the range of 35 to 45 mm diameter and the fourth one is analytic lens should be introduced in between eyepiece and object glass to make this value of this additive constant equal to the zero and the last characteristics is this eyepiece is of should be of greater magnifying power so that we can clearly see the staff reading we can clearly see the crosshairs okay let us move towards the methods of tachometry there are two methods of tachometry one is steady method and another one is 10, 10 initial method the steady method is again divided into two uh, divisions that is one is fixed air method fixed air method and another is movable air method another is movable air method this method is generally not used the fixed air method is commonly used so in steady air method there are two crosshairs upper crosshairs and lower crosshairs and we have to observe these respective readings of upper crosshair and lower crosshair where it intersects the star and difference between that reading gives us the star intercept yes and by multiplying that value by the constant we will get the distance this is nothing but the steady method okay the steady method has the two crosshairs upper and lower and we have to observe the stop intercept with respect to upper crosshairs and lower crosshairs and we have to take the difference between two this intercept and we have to get find out the and we can find out the horizontal distance by using the constants of the tachometer okay and again uh, then uh, this uh, what is uh, difference between this fixed air method and movable air method here in the fixed air method the these two crosshairs are at a fixed distance from each other in fixed air methods whereas in movable air method these two crosshairs are are not at the fixed distance that distance between two these two crosshairs upper crosshairs and lower crosshair that can be adjusted in the movable hair method that one micrometer screw is provided and with the help of that micrometer screw we can vary the distance between these two crosshairs but it means in fixed hair method the distance between these two crosshairs is fixed we cannot adjust it and in movable hair method we can adjust the distance between upper crosshair and lower crosshair with the help of micrometer screw here in movable crosshair there are some targets are fixed target veins are fixed on the staff and to adjust that distance means uh, so by using micrometer screw we can make that crosshair that upper crosshair should target the upper vein and lower crosshair should bisect the lower vein that is we observe the reading in the movable hair method and we can calculate the distance whereas in this fixed hair method this upper crosshair and lower crosshair are at a fixed distance and whatever distance we have to measure we have to find out where this upper crosshair bisect the staff and where this lower crosshair bisect the staff and by taking these two readings, the difference of these two readings, we get the staff intercept and we can calculate the distance. In our syllabus, you have only the steady method, tangential method is not there in your syllabus.